Welcome to the second part of our 15.1, uh, Explaining Equilibrium Systems. This time we're going to take a look at those ice tables, but we're going to add one more component. We're going to add something called the equilibrium constant. The equilibrium constant is kind of like a formula, and we're going to add that into our understanding of uh, the equilibrium systems. Okay, so what the heck is this? Uh, we're going to take a look at a reaction. You have species A plus species B yields species C plus species D. And these letters here, they're actually uh, sort of, well, but not sort of, they're telling you that these are the coefficients. These are standing for the coefficients, and these are the entities, okay? So the A, B, and C, D, uh, are the chemical formulas, and the, uh, the lowercase a, b, c, d are the coefficients. So the equilibrium law expression allows us to calculate the value of the equilibrium constant by using a very simple formula. Uh, your equilibrium constant is equal to your products over your reactants. What's interesting is that the greater the value of the equilibrium constant, the more products are favored at the equilibrium. So here's a little summary. The greater the value, if it's over 1, then the products are favored at equilibrium. And if it's less than 1, if the answer is less than 1, so something negative, then the reactants are favored at equilibrium. So that's really important. This is a really important concept, but it's also very simple. It's either a positive value or a negative value. Let's take a look at this equilibrium constant a little closer. These are your entities, so these are your products. Now take a look at what happens to your coefficients. The coefficients become like to the power of, so that's really important too. And that's all you need to know, that's it, that's all. And then you can use your mathematical skills to figure it out. And we can also use our equilibrium constant along with ice tables to, to, to answer kind of complex questions. So let's take a look at an ice table problem and using the equilibrium constant as well. Remember that these become significant, right? This is a 1 because there's no number there, a 1, and this is a 3. These are your coefficients, and they become part of that uh, equilibrium constant formula. So here's our question. 0 0.100 moles per liter each of A and B are placed in a flask and allowed to come to equilibrium. Right on. At equilibrium, so this is at equilibrium, we have 0 0.022 moles per liter of species C. So only for this species do we have, at equilibrium, kiddos, 0.022 moles per liter. And we're asking for, so the actual question is just asking for us to calculate the value of the um, equilibrium constant. All right, so I'm going to walk you through how to do this. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to um, decide what the heck we have, what information we have. We have this information, 0 0.100 moles per liter of each A and B. So we're going to have to put that into our ice table, and we only have one other bit of information. So here we have our initial concentration. If we have an initial concentration, we have to make the assumption that equilibrium hasn't started yet, and that's where these zeros come from for these two for species C and species D, right kiddos? This is for B and this is for A and they're both the same. The other thing that we have is we have the fact that um, we have, remember capital M, molarity means moles per liter. We have a concentration of 0 0.022 moles per liter at, at uh, actually it's right here, of your um, species C. And we have to think about that. Where did this come from? Where did that come from? It came from adding 0 0.022 to the zero. Okay, so we can actually fill this in after we have this information. So nothing is said, um, just to recap, nothing is said in the problem about the amount of C and D initially, so we assume that they start at zero. And since D started with nothing and ended with 0 0.022 moles per liter, we can see that it changed by a positive 0.022. Ignore the two there, but it doesn't really matter. It's kind of insignificant. So now that we can do, now that we have that information, we know that when we're calculating this part here, right, the change in equilibrium, we use our ratios. We use our molar ratios to get the other data because now we found this information. So now we can use molar ratio 
to find the other ones. So and then we're able to do that just by taking a look at the coefficients, right? So the coefficients are there to use also molar ratio to find the other change in equilibri uh, equilibrium. So the change to, uh, change to A and B are negative Y. They are being used up, not produced. Remember, we have to include that zero, I mean that negative sign to say because those are uh, those entities are, are reducing because they're turning into a, a product. And this sign is a positive sign because the, the products are actually starting to be produced. So now that we have everything filled in, because remember we're adding these now, right? And we're getting these values. Okay, now we can just fill in our equation. Yay! So we go ahead and fill it in. And remember, don't forget your coefficients and where they belong. And it's your products here, remember? It's products over reactants. And then our calculator just does the work for us to get an answer, and there are no units. It's just referred to as the equilibrium constant. All right, so here's another example. We have nitrogen gas plus hydrogen gas produces ammonia. Let's go ahead and write down our equation and balance our equation. And we know that if there's no uh, coefficient, it's a coefficient of 1. So if 1.65 moles, right, of ammonia is placed in a 3 liter flask at 142 degrees Celsius, awesome, that's great, useless for us, and allowed it's useless, and allowed to come to equilibrium, the concentration of the hydrogen gas is 0 0.771, and that's for hydrogen gas. We have the information here to find concentration. Remember, C is equal to N over V, so just number of moles over our volume, and we have the concentration of the ammonia. So then once we do that, we have our concentration of the ammonia, right? So now we, all we have to do is go ahead and uh, use our molar ratios to find the change in concentration. And then we also know that the concentration of the hydrogen gas at equilibrium is 0 0.771, right? And that will help us decide this number to then help us use our molar ratios to find the other values. And then we just add these values to get our equilibrium information. And then we just use that, those, those data points, to figure out our equilibrium constant. Okay, kiddos? And then we have our answer for our equilibrium constant. And of course, you can pause this, this podcast and take a look at it a little, with a little bit more scrutiny. I'm just going over it pretty quickly the, after the first time. Here's a tricky type of question, okay? So we have our entities, and then at the very end of this unit, I'll give you guys the same kind of question with actual using actual entities. But just for, for kind of helping you figure out how to do these types of questions, we have species A, a gas, plus the species B, which is a gas, is going to give you a product, which is also gaseous species. And here are the coefficients for the equation. If the initial concentration of C is 0 0.350 moles per liter, calculate the equilibrium concentrations of all three species, of all three species, if the value of the equilibrium constant is 145. Okay, what the heck? How do we figure this out? It's called algebra. Algebra becomes your friend. So let's take a look at how to set this up. So the only information you're given is this. What? That's it. That's all. That's it. And also lies. We also have our equilibrium constant, right? So what we do now is because we have this, right? Just the product, we assume that the reactants are zero. Nothing new there. Now, uh, because we're starting off with the product, we also know that we have to give for the change in concentration a negative because the product is turning into the reactants. 
And we also have a positive for the reactants because they're going to go up. They have no choice. They're starting at zero. What is this? What the heck is this? These are your, your um, a variable because you don't know it. So if you don't know something, we assign it a variable. And where did the two come from? The two just came from the, co uh, the coefficient of your uh, product. These are obviously one, coefficients of one. So we don't, sure, you can put a one here. It doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So now that we have this, right, we're going to go ahead and try to figure out what's going on at equilibrium. So we have a little bit of information for you, right? We have x or the variable x or any variable that is going to um, be for the first entity, the second entity, and we're subtracting 2x, right, for your product. So the equilibrium concentrations are expressed in terms of, of variables. Now we write all this information into our equilibrium constant expression. But it's going to look funky because it's going to have these guys in it. It's going to have these variables in it. And this is where the algebra comes from. x times x is going to be x squared. Because there's a squared here and a squared here, we can just square root everything. Once you square root everything, then you can go ahead and solve for x. Once you solve for x using some um, algebra, we get an answer of 0 0.0249 moles per liter. Okay? Now that we have this, now that we know what x is equal to, guess what, guys? We can go back into our table and plug in all our x's. So now we know that species A and species B are the same. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, so they're the same. So those get a value of 0.0249, right? Now for C, we know that it's 0 0.350. Subtract 2x. So once I do that, I just take my 0 .0, uh, 0 0.350, subtract my x value, times it by uh, 2. So 2 times the number, subtract this number. And you get an answer of 0 0.300 moles per liter. And that's what you do for that type of um, question. And that, like I said, you're going to get one at the end of this podcast. Let's take a look at some important things to remember. The equilibrium constant can only be calculated using uh, equilibrium concentration values, not initial values. So anytime you're looking at the equilibrium constant equation, you're only looking at the concentrations at equilibrium. We're not using initial values and we're not changing, we're not using a uh, change in, con in concentration. So that's why we have to use a, a ice table along with the equilibrium constant. If one of the change in uh, concentrations is known, then the rest can be calculated according to the molar ratio. This we know, right? And we get molar ratio from the coefficients from our balanced equation. If the change in concentration is negative for reactants, that's when we have a decrease in concentration, right? And it's usually positive, and that's if, if uh, you're given, um, well, it depends on, on what's going on, but it, the change in concentration is positive for products since we have an increase in concentration. So typically, uh, we start off with our reactants, right? That's why they're negative. We, if we start off with our reactants, the, they're going to, basically the change of concentration is going to be negative. However, it's the other way around if, we're, if you're only given product. So just be really careful with that. So concentrations are taken for aqueous solutions and gases, but never for pure substances, solids, or liquids. The only exception to that, kiddos, is water. Water is the only exception. Each chemical reaction has its own equilibrium constant. So here's an example. Write the equilibrium law expression for the reaction of nitrogen monoxide gas with oxygen gas to form nitrogen uh, dioxide gas. So first write the balanced equation for the whole uh, with whole number coefficients. And we have a 2 here, a 1 here, 2 here. So those become significant, right? So all you're doing there is we're just plugging in numbers. And that's a really good, that's a question that would be show up on a quiz. Just simply go from this to that. No big deal. They're all gases, so we include them all. Right on. Okay, next. The value of your equilibrium constant for the formation of hydrogen iodide from hydrogen gas and iodine gas is 40. 
uh, at the temperature of T, determine the value of Kc for the decomposition of Hi at the same temperature. So now, what do we do when we're looking for the opposite? So for the formation reaction, let's compare that to the decomposition reaction. It's just the opposite. For, for the formation reaction, we're taking hydrogen and iodine, making hydrogen uh, iodide. For the uh, decomposition, we're breaking out, uh, breaking uh, up your hydrogen iodide into hydrogen gas and iodine gas. So this one's pretty easy. It's just your products over your reactants, right, kiddos? So for this one, it's just your products over reactants. However, it's opposite, correct? These these are opposite of each other. So they are because the products changed. And we take the reciprocal of that 40. So if the equilibrium constant is 40, that's given for the formation reaction. For the decomposition reaction, it's just the reciprocal, which is 1 over 40. So that's pretty simple. No big deal there, kiddos. Uh, which is 1 over 40 is equal to 0 0.025. So that's how you. That's a really quick fix on how to find uh, how to go from formation to decomposition, or decomposition to formation. So equilibrium, pardon me, equilibrium law expressions do not include solids or liquids because their concentrations are fixed. They can't change. The chemical amount or number of moles per unit volume is a constant value. So here's an example, you, keeping that in mind. Remember, water is an exception. Water liquid is an exception. Write the equilibrium law expression for the decomposition of solid ammonium chloride to gaseous ammonia and gaseous hydrogen chloride. So if you have something like this, kiddos, just be aware this does not belong in an equilibrium constant, right? So when you write down your equilibrium constant expression, you're only going products over reactants. Your reactants happen to be a solid, so it's really over one, but you don't have to express it that way over one. You just write down the constant, the, the products part, and you're done. Done. That's it. Ions in solution must be represented as single entities. Equilibrium constant expressions are always written from the net ionic form of reaction equations. Spectator, spectator ions are not included. Okay. So here's an example. Write the equilibrium law expression for the reaction of zinc in copper 2 chloride solution. So here we have, what's this? A solid and a solid. So are we going to include those guys? No. So the only thing we could do is just use our ions because we don't include our solids. And it's still products over reactants. Okay? But we don't include solids or liquids except for water. So predicting final equilibrium concentrations, okay, let's take a look at this. In a 500 milliliter stainless steel reaction vessel at 900 degrees Celsius, carbon monoxide and water vapor react to produce carbon dioxide and hydrogen. Evidence indicates that this reaction establishes an equilibrium with only partial conversion of reactants to products. Lots of talk, don't even worry about it. Initially, so here's your initial concentration. 2.00 moles of each reactant is placed in the vessel. For this reaction, uh, the equilibrium constant for this reaction is 4.20 at 900 degrees Celsius. We don't care about the temperature, so don't even worry about it. Uh, what amount concentration of each substance will be present at equilibrium? Okay, so we have our moles and we have our volume, so we can definitely find our concentration, okay? So write a balance equation for the reaction at equilibrium. Carbon monoxide plus water yields carbon dioxide plus H2 gas. It's a one to one to one ratio. So that's super easy, guys. We don't have to use we don't have to worry too much about the change in concentration and the molar ratios because they're all one to one. So that that's nice. So nice. So first thing we're gonna do is we are going to use the balance equation to write the equilibrium uh, law expression. And there, we don't have to worry about any numbers here because it's a one to one to one ratio. So the initial amount concentration of the carbon monoxide in the water are the same. Remember, you're taking your uh, moles over liters, right? And remember, milliliters have to be converted to liters. And this is what we get, 4.00 moles per liter for each of carbon monoxide and hydrogen, uh, sorry, water in the gaseous state. Okay. So let's take a look at what the heck is going on. Here's our initial. Our initial concentrations were given to you, or not really given to you, but the data was given to you, so you can find them. And then we have zero, zero, obviously, because it's going to eventually uh, produce products. 
So what also you have to know is you have to know to put in your variables. So because we have um, just your initial concentration, right, we know that there's the, the, the reactants are going to go down. You have your negative values. So it's negative x. And these guys have no choice but to go up. So it's going to be a positive x, right? Also, keep in mind, there's it's a one-to-one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one -to -one ratio. So we don't have to worry about those coefficients becoming, I don't even know what they're called, big numbers in front of the variable. Nothing there. It's just one. So then we just go ahead and we add these guys up, right? And we get this information. That then gets placed into our um, equilibrium constant, keeping in mind that the equilibrium constant was given to you, which is 4.20, right? Your x times x is going to be x squared, and then you have your 400 minus x squared. You take your square root of everything, right? And then if you square root everything, you're going to get 2.05 is equal to x over uh, 400 minus x. Then what you're going to do is you're basically solving for x, so you bring that over to this side, and you get x is equal to 2.05 times, in brackets, 4.00 minus x. And then you're basically uh, solving for x, which is a 2.69. After all that work, all that work that we did, we know that x is equal to 2.69. So what do we do? Go back into our ice table. We go back into our ice table, and we include the 2.69. And the only number that changes is for your products, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So we're just going to go ahead and, um, uh, what the heck is going to here, which are with our negative 2.69, with our products of uh, 0. Point, or 2.69, pardon me, to get 2.69, oh my goodness, 2.69 for our products, and 1.31 and 1.31 for our reactants. Okie dokie. That's, that's it, kiddos. So I'm going to um, say have a great day, and we'll see you next time.